Today I want to talk about what to do when God isolates you. And I'm going to break it down into five simple steps that you can follow in your season or period of isolation, or what I prefer to call solitude with the Lord, which is a very important time. And the first step is, do not be afraid. Like the quote from Isaiah goes, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Something I noticed in the church was that many Christians are afraid to be alone with God. They're afraid to be in isolation. They're afraid to spend time with God in silence and worship. They're afraid to have a sort of natural, organic, deeper relationship with the Lord. And a lot of Christians believe that if we spend time alone with the Lord, away from the fellowship, then we're going to backslide and fall away from the Lord. But if this video is for you, you know that the Lord is isolating you. You've come to understand that it's for a reason and a purpose. You may be struggling with it, but your spiritual discernment is telling you that you are supposed to be alone with him for a time, whether it's short or for a season. But there's absolutely nothing to fear in taking some time out with the Lord, away from the world, away from anyone and everyone else, just to be with him, and it's actually very important. There are many examples of this in scripture as well, like when God called Elijah to the wilderness alone, or when Jesus would go off alone to spend time in the wilderness with God the Father. Something I've also come to realize is that often God isolates us so he can answer our prayers. Because the period of isolation that God calls us into is a transformative period where he's going to help us grow in him, crucify our flesh, and lead us to take inspired action towards his will for our lives. So the second step is to surrender to the season. There's no use fighting the will of God. If he's called you to isolation, you may as well just let go and surrender to it. And use that time to even notice the resistance within you and all the places that are resistant to just being alone in communion and fellowship with our Lord. Because the quicker we can accept it, the quicker we can step into his perfect love and perfect peace, where he can transform and heal our hearts and make us whole, so that we can be prepared, equipped, and ready for all that he has planned for us, all the blessings he's going to bring into our lives, and the blessing he's going to make us to this world, which for some of us requires isolation. Which brings me to step three, which is to connect deeply to God to develop your relationship with him. If God has called you to a season of isolation, it's very likely that he is teaching you to rely on him alone for everything. If you're anything like I was, you may be overly dependent on the opinions, guidance, and leadership of others. And the Lord may be calling you into this season of solitude with him so that he can teach you and show you you truly do not need anyone else but him in order to thrive, heal, grow, and find peace and security and freedom and happiness and joy in him alone. Now this doesn't mean that he's not going to bring us into communion with other believers and bring other relationships into our lives or back into our lives later, but developing a deep, intimate, healthy relationship with God can heal us of all those relationship wounds that are causing problems in our lives and help prepare us for healthy relationships in the future. Because as we develop intimacy with Christ and come to know what love truly is, like 1 Corinthians 13 spoke about love is patient and kind and long-suffering. It does not envy or boast. It keeps no record of wrongs. As we grow deeper in our connection to the Lord and he grows within us, our spiritual discernment increases and we're going to be able to see and find and value and cherish healthy, loving relationships that may have eluded us in the past when we gave all our love and approval to other people. Which brings me to step four, keep it all to yourself, keep it on the inside. I received this advice a lot, but it took me a long time to really listen to it and follow it. The truth is we really need to stop telling everyone our business. That may be why God has brought us into isolation. There may be monitoring spirits and the people around us, but we do not need to be paranoid about the demonic because we have the Holy Spirit. It's nice to have love and support from other people, but oftentimes they fall short of the love and support that God, who is perfect, can provide for us. 
and we may be in a season of solitude with the Lord isolated from the world because he wants to teach us to be dependent only on his love and approval alone, which is gonna bring us to a greater place of peace and freedom in this life than we could ever even hope or imagine. Because when we put our approval and love in the hands of other people, that's how we get into really unhealthy relationship. That's how we become in bondage to other people or groups of people or even our church. And so if you're in this season of isolation, Christ is probably teaching you to trust in his headship and to learn to follow him as your good shepherd so that you can build your confidence in him to step forth into the life that he has planned for you and to bring forth the dreams that he's put in your heart into this world. So in this season of isolation, he may be teaching you how to do that. And you'll probably find that you're inspired to take different actions and he wants you to keep all of those to yourself from the mundane to creative projects to specific things the Lord is calling you to do. We can use this time to sort of practice not telling everyone else all our business. I personally was an open book for many years and it led to discouragement, it led to confusion. And so in the season of isolation, when you aren't hearing the outside world and all those outside voices anymore, you can come into greater clarity and peace about the direction that the Lord wishes you to take with your life and wishes you to take with him. We may even be surrounded by people with good intentions and the Lord is calling us into isolation anyway because they can still misguide us and mislead us and we may be overly dependent. So God may be using this time to teach you the power of silence and listening to him, listening for his guidance, whether that's his still small voice within your heart whether that guidance is coming from the world around you and the metaphors that he speaks and sort of coincidences or synchronicities that are happening in your life that are going to guide you and lead you. Remembering that he'll bring the right people back into your life when it's time. And the fifth step to surviving a season of isolation with the Lord is to praise him through it all. A lot of the times why God calls us into a season of solitude with him is so that we can go deeper with him in worship and praise, so we can build greater trust and intimacy in the Lord. I think in the modern church, a lot of us think that worship is simply showing up on Sunday and singing a few songs. But worship is so much deeper than that. Worship is a posture of our hearts of total love and devotion to the Lord. And so he may be calling you apart from this world so that you can spend time loving him and building your relationship and receiving his love to nourish you and fill you with his life. And so while in a season of isolation, we may experience a great crushing as the Lord helps us crucify our flesh to make room for more and more of him within us, what that eventually naturally ends up leading to is deeper peace, wholeness, trust, love, connection, and intimacy in the Lord. And that's going to help us grow into a more vibrant, healthy, thriving relationship with him so that he can thrive us, prosper us in the world. Because we do not thrive on our own. We can only thrive with Christ when we are in proper relationship with him. And in that process, God will remove everything from our hearts that we are carrying as a false idol, everything else that we have been worshiping, whether we know it's there or not. He's gonna take us through a series of lessons that may be triggering and people may come in and out or certain things will happen that seem like spiritual warfare. But God even has a purpose in the warfare and he's going to use those things to reveal to us what we need to surrender to him and let go so that he can purify our hearts. One of my favorite scriptures is from the Psalms. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, but he cannot heal our hearts and make them whole if we do not give them to him. And God loves you enough that he's never going to take it. But the more territory we give to the Lord in our hearts, the more room he has to heal us, to transform us, and to help us grow into the men or women that he created us to be so that we can thrive with him and step into our divine calling and passionate purpose in this life. So wherever you're at in this process, give yourself some grace and know that it's all happening perfectly according to his will, even if your whole life is turned upside down as mine once did. Know that's because God is making way for the life that is truly best for you. 
And in this season of solitude called apart from the world, the Lord is going to help you to come to understand that eventually, even though it may be painful at times, you can always turn to Him, you can always talk to Him, you can always invite Him in and receive more and more of Him, His peace, His love, and His goodness, which is going to bring you back to life. Because Jesus didn't just put on flesh and come down from heaven to die for our sins, he died so that he could rise into new life and bring us into new life with him, which we receive by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And in times of isolation and solitude with the Lord, it just becomes so much easier to hear his guidance in the myriad of ways that he speaks to our hearts. So there's no need to fear the season of isolation in the Lord. Use it to develop deeper trust, intimacy, and faith in him. Use it to grow your relationship Keep it all to yourself. Remember to worship him and praise him through it. And know that you will emerge victorious from this season in ways you could have never planned or dreamed up yourself. And you will be in awe eventually of the place that he brings you to when you surrender to a period of solitude with him. And he lifts you to new heights. For those who wait on the Lord shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall rise up on wings like eagles. Remembering that the season of isolation and challenges and suffering has a purpose and that's for God to set us freer than ever before so that we can better serve his eternal plan and purpose, the one that's so much bigger than us in the long run. God bless you and keep you until next time, friends. And I'm praying so much peace for you in this season of solitude with the Lord. May you come into a deep sacred union with the Lord in this time and be filled with his spirit, learning to let him guide you and lead you in life into your promised land. In Jesus' name, I pray this over you, my friends. Amen.